guys, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. I make DIY videos, and I specifically focus on upcycling and taking one thing and transforming it into something else, which is exactly what we're doing this week. I picked up some materials that I think will be good for creating DIY harnesses. Harnesses have been a big fashion moment in the last couple of years. Prior to that, there was sort of the utility side of that and then the fetish fashion side of that. And they've kind of merged together in the name of fashion to create something that is like cool and utilitarian and sexy and functional. So I am looking to explore that today. What I like about the harness trend is that it, on an accessory level, can add some like texture and interest to what could be an otherwise kind of plain outfit, particularly for summer. In the winter, you always have options to layer things up and create something that's a little bit more textured and a little more depth in an outfit. But in the summer, it's really hard to do that. So I think that a harness is a good way to kind of add a little bit of dimension without adding actual wall bend layers. I also am interested in some of the harness bags that I've seen from Johnny Coda or Jeffrey Mack or ASOS was doing them for a while, they might still be. I like the function of those where you can put away your phone or your keys or your wallet or like essentials that you need on your person. So that if you're wearing something that doesn't have pockets, you have some more options there. So if I could have something that I could just like throw on to wear over kind of anything and be able to store those essentials away to have it be fashionable and functional, that would be great. All right, so we're gonna jump on in. If you like how this project turns out, you can press the like button. If you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and press subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so that you can be notified when I upload a new video. For this project, I started with a couple different kinds of seat belts and thick ribbed elastic pieces that I found a while back at the Scrap Exchange in Durham, North Carolina. If you're in the Durham area, it's an awesome place to pick up a few random spare parts to reuse. I also picked up a couple things at Goodwill that I thought would be useful. A beat up messenger bag with lots of straps, a cool rubber detail, and the type of clip closure that I was looking for, a faux leather wallet purse that had several zipped compartments, and a couple mesh bags that were super cool, although I didn't end up using them this time. I was thinking of making a mesh utility vest. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that next. I started by simply pulling things apart with my seam ripper. I did the purse first since I had the clearest idea of how that might work. I knew it had three distinct compartments, so I figured I could pull them all apart and have three complete pockets for my harness bag. This mostly worked as planned, although two of the little bags shared the same zipper, so I had to pull the zipper out entirely. Once I had pulled things apart, I experimented with the style and the function of the harness by pinning things on a form that's very close to my size. If you don't have a form, you can pin things around your own body or take careful measurements to see how things will line up. I tried a bunch of different things using the seat belts and elastic as a base. I knew I wanted the two largest pockets to be on the side since they were the same size, but I wasn't really sure what to do with the third. I ultimately found that a less is more approach was useful for this harness, and I ended up using just a simple cross back design with the seat belts only. If you're using seat belts or any sort of rigid straps like that, just pay attention to the way that the material hugs the body since it can't stretch or bend. Along the way, whenever I wasn't sure about the design, I asked for feedback on Instagram. You can follow me over there to give your opinions on upcoming projects. Instagram liked the chest strap, but nicks the third pocket entirely. I started the assembly process by opening up the D-ring on the right side pouch with pliers and feeding the end of the leather loop from the other side into it. Now I had a closure method across the front. I spent a while measuring and adjusting to ensure symmetry and a good fit. This took trial and error and multiple try-on sessions. Finally, I started the sewing process. Because I was working from an existing bag and would have a hard time attaching the straps to the pouches on my machine, I ended up sewing about 80% of this project by hand. This method, coupled with the fact that I had opened up the liner to remove the zipper, allowed me to create a clean and professional finish. But it was painful, physically and emotionally. <laughs> sewing through multiple layers of faux leather and tough seatbelt fabric meant that I often used the table as leverage to push my needle through or even resorted to pliers near the end. For the assembly, I first attached the side pouches to the straps. Then I created the pouch closures by attaching the flap on one side and reinserting the zipper on the other, reattaching the liner as I went. I finally got to use my machine to sew around the intersections of the seatbelt straps. Once everything was assembled, I liked the shape and function, but I wish that the gold hardware was more evenly distributed throughout the design. Instagram agreed. So I ordered some gold rivets on Amazon to use at the joints on the upper half to mirror those on the lower half. 
I marked the holes and punched through with a screwdriver and then sharp scissors. Then I pushed the longer piece of the rivet through and used the tools that came with the kit to hammer the back piece on. It took me a minute to get used to installing these. The metal was super soft and wanted to crush if I didn't line everything up just perfectly, but it ended up working out. One done. The harness made from the messenger bag came together much more quickly since there were fewer pieces to begin with and the design was much less involved. I thought it would be best to use the rubber tread in one piece, so the only logical placement was the back center. And I knew the closure should be at the front center. The padded piece from the strap had to go in the center as well since there was only one. I tried it horizontally first but ended up liking it better vertical. From there, it just made sense to have the straps come out of the center and split to attach at the front. Design done. Now to assemble. Again, hand sewing was the best method since I wasn't sure I could get the rubber piece through my machine. However, this was so much easier than the faux leather bag since there was much less to sew and the rubber already had very defined holes from where it had been sewn before. Pretty painless. It's always a good idea to try things on throughout the process to make sure everything is on track. For example, after trying on this harness, I found it was better if I pulled the straps on a slight diagonal so that they could head up toward the neck rather than being a perfect 90 degree angle like I had thought. And we're done with both. Let me know down in the comments which design you prefer and if you have any other ideas for upcycle materials that would make a great harness design.